right, so we're going to install an XT60 plug. Now, I get a lot of speed controls in that use full length wires. You're not supposed to do that. You only need to use at most half, probably a lot less in most situations. So if you got a lot of extra wire on your installs, you can remove that without really worrying. Um, they don't have to be a certain length. Shorter wires is always better. So use a sweet Novak strippers. There's a cutter on the bottom there. And I usually get my power wires about the length of my index finger. Just most of my installs are generally about that way, so it makes it easy on me. Um, strippers work. Slide them in here. Give it a squeeze. That's that. Then you always want to twist the wire that you strip very, very tightly so that when you go to tin the wire that all the strands are nice and tight together. You don't get any stray strands poking up, going off, touching other contacts. So you get those done up like that. We're going to apply a little bit of flux. The child safety cap is a little tricky. You got to push down and turn it. Some folks don't push them down and they don't open. Put the lid back on, set that aside. Use my sweet Novak silver solder. Um, the iron is going to be anywhere from probably about 800 to 900 degrees for most situations. If you get a good 40 watt iron or a 60 watt iron, that's plenty. Uh, most of the times you go to a good hobby shop, they have those nice solder stations with the adjustable temperature. Uh, I run mine right around the, anywhere between 6 to 800 degrees most of the time, depending on what you're soldering. 12 gauge wire needs to be a little hotter, 14 gauge wire is okay, small size stuff, you can go down super low. Um, we're going to be installing these XT60s. Um, we sell these, these are great. This is the side that you put on the battery pack. Um, the reason being is if anything were to fall and come in contact with here that's metal, it can't get in there and make contact with both of the barrels. If the battery pack lead touches something, it's very unlikely that's gonna come in contact. Whereas this guy here, so a body clip falls in there, or a piece of metal, uh, you can very easily short those out. So we put these on the device side, uh, goes on the speed controls, chargers, stuff like that. Um, we're going to show you how to install that here in just a second, but before we get that far, we want to make sure that we put shrink tubing on the wire. So I usually take one of the pre-cut guys, cut it in half, and then we slip those onto the wires first because they've already been tinned. I try to put the shrink wrap on after I tin the wires because sometimes the process of tinning the wires actually shrink your shrink wrap a little bit. Um, so first thing you're going to do before you install the plug is tin the contacts to make sure everything's okay so you can do a, just a little bit of flux on there if you want to be safe about it just a very small dab is all that's necessary and then these guys what I like to do is hold it with my finger and just go like this feed in a little bit and there you go nice and tin give you an idea what that looks like you're just gonna have a small thin layer of solder on that base point there um, do the other side also same thing a little bit Flux, drop this guy, hold this like this. Not gonna lie, I've done this a few times. There's a little bit of technique into this whole process of holding two things with one hand. Um, the connector itself is marked. There's a positive right there and a negative right there. Um, be careful, sometimes the mold release will make this look like a positive. It's definitely a negative. The side like with the little taper on it is always going to be the negative. It's real easy to find it if you're trying to plug batteries in in the, in the dark or under the body. You can feel these very distinctly on the two plugs, which is nice. So you lay this guy down flat like that, hold him in place, lay the soldering iron on there, let it flow, push it down, pull the iron out, let it cool off, and that's all there is to it. One and done. And we'll do the other side the same way. Sometimes it's easier if you hold the wire on the bottom than the plug. I do both. Keep everything nice and stable. Push it in a bit. Now the trick to all of this is making sure that you get the wire down onto the metal part of the plug. Uh, you don't want it sitting in a pool of solder above the connector part. The wire itself wants to be as close to the metal contacts as you can. So we got those installed in there. The, the next part is to uh, shrink up the shrink wrap. I just use a lighter for this. You shrink them probably halfway first. A little bit of application of heat there to get it um, just a little bigger than the size of the wire and because you want to be able to slide it inside the back side of the housing here like that so you get nice good protection of any debris getting in there so it just sits inside the plastic housing a little bit uh, after you do that now for lots of folks you're not supposed to use fire 
to do shrink wrap heat guns are much better but for the sake of the video we use the fire so there you have it nice clean install very easy to do no extra tools necessary thanks for watching folks